Oh, by the way, this job was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be, and I was just being a big whiny, push, push, push. Yes, we are in the Viper womb. Yeah, this is getting creepy, Casey. Doesn't have that core, which is crazy, because if it did, it probably would cool just fine on the track. So this was a cheap out move by Dodge. Long time in the future, my daughter or possible another child or somebody else will make great memories with it as well. That is, of course, if World War III doesn't break out and our present current giant puppet doesn't ruin everything for everybody. So today we're working on the blue with white stripes Dodge Viper GTS track car. Uh, long story short, I want to be able to drive it around a track like a loony uh, and not have bad things happen to the car. Now, the first things we did uh, had nothing to do with any of that. It was to make it look cool, feel cool, and drive cool and stick better, which doesn't solve any of the inherent problems of the car. So put tires on it, KW coilovers, and uh, a kick butt Pagani Zonda steering wheel, and really awesome carbon fiber race seats, which will be great. However, the first biggest problem of the car is cooling. It doesn't cool. It will overheat the water of the engine within a lap, lap and a half driven hard. So the radiator today is coming out. I'm gonna tell you where I'm gonna send it and what I'm gonna do. So time lapse. <laughs> I got the radiator out and it started to get annoying because I was slipping in coolant and uh, falling over stuff and whatnot. But um, things I uh, have come to discover and realize real quickly, I was told that the Viper radiators, basically if you take them out and take it to a mom and pop radiator shop, what that means is a place that actually makes stuff and can fix it, unlike our current modern consumer throwaway bullshit culture that just throws stuff away and does it. They can just take it apart and put in another core. So a radiator core, now this might be a little hard to show. You guys see all the lines that run transverse here or laterally, and then you've got the fins. And the fins are just little aluminum that, tran that create more surface area so that the heat energy that's inside the coolant that's flowing in one through this tank and through all these lines here, all the tubes to the other side, see all these little fins are touching the tubes and they're you know, aluminum. Um, and aluminum is a great heat conductor. So when the air flows through, you get all that surface area to transmit the heat energy from what was the originally the combustion of the engine through the coolant to the air. Now, what you'll notice is right here, there's this big wall there and there. And what's crazy is a core, I'm gonna try to get this closer while yapping. A core, if you notice, is a, like a slot. It's not just a round tube, but it's like a slot and you can see it. And each one of those spots is where a core would have gone. But for whatever reason, the factory Dodge Viper radiator doesn't have that core, which is crazy because if it did, it probably would cool just fine on the track. So this was a cheap out move by Dodge to make it be okay on the street. So long story short, you could just take this in and have it restored and refurbished with another core put on. But I'm gonna send this out 
And I'm pretty excited to showcase that to you because it's really an amazing company, PWR, which is formerly known as CNR Radiators, which um, make the best. They're here in America in Indianapolis. They have the radiators in the Indy car that Genius Garage has had. And in the past, I've had them make, custom make a radiator for the Indy car, super high efficiency, tight tolerances and all that. So they're gonna be doing my Viper radiator and it's gonna fit in the stock location. It's gonna have the same drains and all the mounting points and all that, but be super efficient. So I'll have all the cooling in the world I'm gonna need. Now, something else, which we're gonna to have to yank out of here in more time-lapse fashion is the Viper does have a separate oil cooler, which to be honest, I forgot all about because it's been a long time since I had that car apart when I was, replacing the cam and had the radiator out and all. So the oil cooler just sits up kind of in the front. So what I'm gonna probably do is just have them, I may just have them remake the oil cooler the same size, but just make it more efficient and nice and new. That way I can plug into the factory auxiliary lines. Uh, the other thing about this car is currently my air conditioning doesn't work. So I may just remove things relating to the air conditioning. So all the cooling in the front of the car is just for the oil cooler, the engine, and the water. I may or may not get into cooling the transmission, um, and I think it has a rudimentary cooler for the power steering fluid. So I'm gonna take a quick peek at that before I send stuff in to PWR to get made. Uh, but in the meantime, we have to take out the oil cooler and make another mess. Yay, time lapse. Oh, by the way, this job was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be, and I was just being a big whiny, puss about it and should have just got to work and shut up. <laughs> Good advice, Casey. Get to work. Shut up. It is the next day. Um, sorry I didn't show you guys. Finally pulling out the, the air conditioning. I keep forgetting, is this the evaporator or the condenser? Air conditioning, stupid. It doesn't make a car go faster and mine never works, so I never learn the stuff. Anyway, it's an air conditioning radiator. Finally got that out, just had to wiggle it. Uh, as a note for anybody young, those old time blacksmith puzzles you can buy like in Amish land or whatever. Um, those are really brilliant, genius puzzles. And uh, I remember when I, got my job way back when, part-time working as a Ferrari mechanic in college. The guy that hired me, like the first day, he handed me all the, the uh, blacksmith puzzles, the old-time puzzles with horseshoes and stuff and see if I could figure it out. And he goes, you're the first person to figure those out that quickly. Um, so that's a good way to see how smart you are to be a mechanic and having to deal with all the crap dumbass engineers right out of college create in the car world and they don't know how things go together. Okay, so anyway, the radiator's out, we talked about that, and I did get the oil cooler out. This was a difficulty thing on the uh, Viper for me, and I'll show you here. Now, it's got the AN line, so I really like this, that factory, it actually has a proper oil cooler, and this plugs into where the oil filter is there. Now, one thing I am gonna modify on the car is the oil pan, so there's less sloshing. I am gonna keep it wet sump, that's easier in the long run being mostly a street car. Um, so I need to make sure this cools well. So I am gonna send this in to uh, PWR, uh, and they're gonna make me an even nicer one to bolt in the stock location. Now, truth be told, I noticed that the power steering cooler and the oil cooler were loose and flopping around, hence my car having a lot of miles on it. I was not able to break these two fittings loose where it was. I can only get my hand through the uh, radiator inlet area of the bumper and through the back, which is very difficult to get the wrenches in, and they're really, really on there. So um, there's a support in the glass reinforced plastic shroud for the radiator. It's like a thin um, band that comes down and that was stopping me from being able to just pull it out. Um, and I looked at the strength of everything and the strength of the way the new radiator is gonna be and all, I'm like, 
I don't actually need that support. So I carefully cut it out with a hacksaw and then I was able to remove this. The other thing I noticed is, so this uh, oil cooler, if you look at the relation of the Viper, uh, goes in front of the, the water radiator be here and your air conditioning radiator be here. And this is kind of just out there and it's held on and bolted to these two things on a crossbar. And then this gets sandwiched between the glass reinforced plastic shroud and support for the radiator and obviously goes to the motor. But I noticed this line here, you'll see had a slight kinking going on to it. I think you can see it right there. Now, I don't know how much it was kinked, but that's not gonna be good for flow and can attribute to a, low, a lower oil pressure. So I may actually put on brand new lines, um, possibly with a slightly bigger capacity. We'll just see what makes the most sense. Um, there, this is pretty haggard, so I really ought to make some new lines uh, and want to put the old cooler on. So I got to knock these off and package these up nicely and send them in to have new made. Um, so that's pretty exciting. In other news, uh, the Viper is a cool car to build into a race car. There's a, a lot of room to work, but the problem is that room, I'm going to show you here, is destroyed by the nature of the way the hood opens, which you can't knock because, you know, that's how they made the car look really cool and be like a race car. So it's really not that difficult to come on over here and be able to work in this area. But when you have to reach way up in there to where the radiator is and everything, it gets a little tedious. And you end up spending your time diving in here through the wheel well. I'll show you. Wait, let's do it. Let's do it this way. Here, I'll dive in with me. It's like inversely being born. Oh, oh, push, 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 push. Yes. We are in the Viper womb. Yeah, this is getting creepy, Casey. Um, so anyway, this is where the support was that I cut out. There's one right here. This is still plenty strong. And then the uh, radiator construction will be strong too, the new aluminum. Here's the uh, oil cooler, I believe, for the power steering. Let's look and see. Yep, that's for the power steering. So that's floppy and loose and stupid. I may go so as far to put a little a different cooler in. It might be smart, but um, I'm excited about this. Uh, certainly making the Viper better and giving it the love that it needed and I think deserves um, this car. I put the most miles on of any car I've ever had and created the most great memories over a long period of time. So, you know, in that sense, I think um, obviously it's just an inanimate object, but you know, it carries on kind of the, the soul of the experiences and the owner and driver and the life and stories. I think that's why Vin and Mickey and Car Stories is a very popular channel because, you know, these things mean something to us uh, because of how they are part of our lives. So in that sense, I think it deserves me putting the effort in to give it a new birth, a new life, and I'm excited to take you guys along the journey. Now, if you like Dodge Vipers, remember that the Genius Garage nonprofit has a Viper just like this one, but nicer. Um, that is being a, uh, a sweepstakes through Tap Cat. You can go down in the description below and check it out. Um, it's the best sweepstakes I've ever found. It was created only for the sake of raising money for nonprofits and doing that right. So it's not a scammy BS one like you see all the others. Um, and that's gonna be given away in 2023, November, uh, during Genius Garage's 10th anniversary. So that's really cool. And somebody out there is going to win it. Um, gonna be chosen by computer, so I have no idea who, but you have the ability to go in there, donate to Genius Garage, and uh, depending on how much you donate, gives you different tickets and such, um, you know, different, um, entries, shall we say, to win. So obviously more gives you more of a chance to win. And that's it, guys. But um, thanks for watching. It means a lot. And I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me. And it's going to be a lot of fun to get this Viper out when it's together and running this year and go to Cars and Coffee and hit the track and make new memories with friends. And, you know, I've never got to take my wife for a ride before um, on the track. So hopefully we will get to do that. And uh, who knows, you know, after all these new fun memories, making with people on the track with old goose, um, you know, maybe someday, long time in the future, my daughter or possible another child or who knows, somebody else will make great memories with it as well. That is, of course, if World War III doesn't break out and our present current giant puppet doesn't ruin everything for everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh. Well, let's fight for a better tomorrow. See you guys next time.